Hi there, my name is Jocelyn and this is Tiny Ice where I share bits from my trip to Antarctica in two minutes or less. Pole as a Polar Trek educator to learn about and work with the Ice Cube Laboratory. You can check out more information about them below. Today we're talking about U.S. research stations on Antarctica. There's three of them, Palmer, McMurdo, and Amundsen Scott South Pole, but I'm going to focus on the two that I visited, McMurdo and Amundsen Scott South Pole. Ready? Let's go. First, the sunlight. I went to Antarctica during the summer season, which means the sun is up 24 hours a day. Imagine going out for a walk at 1 a.m. with the sun shining as brightly as ever. Because of this, both stations have window coverings that can at least trick your body into thinking the day has ended. The sun is up for 24 hours because of how the Earth is tilted on its axis. During the summer months, Antarctica is facing the sun and receives 24 hours of sunlight. But during the winter months, when the Earth is on the other side, Antarctica is tilted away from the sun and receives, yup, 24 hours of darkness. And now on to location. McMurdo is located on the coast of Antarctica, and the South Pole is inland, designated by exactly 90 degrees south. You can think of McMurdo as the polar beach town and the South Pole as the polar desert. McMurdo is at sea level, has about 60% humidity, and had an average temperature of 20 degrees Fahrenheit. The South Pole is at an elevation of 9,301 feet, has close to 0% humidity, and had an average temperature of negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit, not including the wind chill, which made it even colder. Now let's move on to size. McMurdo houses around 900 people, and the buildings are arranged like a little town that you can walk around in. The views of the ice shelf are breathtaking. Seals, transantarctic mountains, and lots of sea ice. The South Pole Station houses around 100 50 people and all of its amenities are inside one single building. It's also very flat and white in every single direction. Well, not up. And now the science. Because of McMurdo's wildlife and landforms, a lot of the research that takes place there is rooted in biology, geology, and climate systems. They even have their own wastewater treatment plant. At the South Pole, there is no wildlife, so most of the research that happens there is based in physics and astronomy. There's massive telescopes and an atmospheric research observatory that has its own clean air section with the cleanest air in the world. <sighs> Both stations were awesome. While I was in McMurdo, I had a chance to go cross-country skiing for the first time. That was an adventure. I only fell once. <laughs> I also was able to go on hikes that had some of the most incredible views I've ever seen. I'd still have to say that the South Pole's my favorite just because I spent the majority of my time there and it really feels like you're on an alien planet. Now I'm obsessed with following people that are stationed there throughout the winter because the photos that they post of the auroras are absolutely gorgeous. I'll link some below so that you can check them out. Thanks for stopping by for some tiny eyes. Stay tuned for more bits from my trip to Antarctica. See you later.